You will now be entering Module 1, Chapter 4, EMS Officer Communications. Please review this section and complete the assignment with a minimum score of 80%. The learning objectives for this chapter are Understanding of the communication cycle and its five parts Message, Sender, Medium, Receiver, and Feedback. The basic skills for effective communication include Active listening, staying focused, ensuring accuracy, keeping your supervisor informed, controlling the grapevine, and overcoming environmental noise. Identification of ways to improve listening skills. Identification of the key points for emergency communications. Identifying the types of reports and discuss their use. And describe the ways to counteract environmental noise. Many EMS officers wear a rank insignia that parallel the military ranking structure. These insignias represent the responsibility each officer holds within the agency. Communication skills are important to provide directions to crew members, review policies and procedures, and the exchange of information in a wide range of situations. Communication skills are required to provide direction to crew members, review new policies and procedures, and simply exchange information in a wide range of situations. Communication skills are equally important when working with citizens, conducting tours, releasing public information, and preparing reports. Communication skills are required to provide direction to crew members, review new policies and procedures, and simply exchange information in a wide range of situations. Communication skills are equally important when working with citizens, conducting tours, releasing public information, and preparing reports. The message is the meaning, idea, or concept that a speaker is attempting to communicate to the listener. While most people think of a message as the spoken word, it also consists of nonverbal clues as well. The message may be transmitted in many ways, including spoken, visual, touch, smell, taste, or any combination of these. An effective message includes a combination of these elements that convey the same ideas to the listener or receiver. The sender is the first piece of the communication model. The sender identifies the need to communicate with another and creates the message to be sent. The message is created by translating thoughts and or images into verbal media. The sender structures his or her message around the ability of the receiver to understand and interpret the message. The medium or channel is how the message is actually communicated to the receiver. This medium can be many different types such as face-to-face, -face, telephone, radio, email, and texting. It is important for the sender to choose the appropriate medium based on the entirety of the situation. For example, an incident commander or sender may choose to meet face-to-face -face with a division officer or receiver due to the critical nature of the information being sent or received and the hazardous environment personnel are working in. The face-to-face -face medium assures the sender that the receiver is able to clearly receive all the information needed. The receiver receives a message and decodes it. There are many factors that determine how a receiver will interpret and understand the message. Those factors include education, cultural background, perception, attitude, and context. It's interesting to note that during daily conversations, it's misinterpretation by the receiver based on these factors that leads to misunderstandings. Good listening skills are essential for overcoming these misunderstandings. The response, called feedback, is important to the continuation of the conversation. Feedback completes the communication process, resulting in an ongoing cycle. The message's effect will be obvious to the sender by the auditory, visual, or tactile response of the receiver. If the feedback is positive, the desired result will be achieved. If the feedback is negative, then confrontation or misinterpretation may result, thus resulting in the sender having to alter the wording of the message to ensure the message is properly understood by the receiver. Listening is probably the most important communication skill. Improving listening skills is essential to effective communication. Many people confuse hearing and listening. Although both activities involve the use of the auditory senses through the use of the ears, they are not the same. Hearing can be identified as a physiological process that involves sound waves striking the eardrums. As an EMS officer, one must identify potential listening barriers and eliminate them prior to communicating with an individual or group. These barriers may include the following. Noise producing equipment, visual distractions such as posters on the walls, uncovered or open windows with exterior views, 
cell phones, pagers, and radios. Listening can be identified as the active part of the communication process that includes attending, understanding, remembering, evaluating, and responding to a speaker. Practicing good listening skills is the best way to improve them. Listen to speeches or stories on audio tapes and try to repeat the key elements. Practice taking notes at meetings to improve your note-taking skills. These actions may help to overcome the barriers created by information overload by pinpointing the essential elements of the messages. Some other tips include focusing on the speaker, using training and post-incident evaluations to identify barriers and solutions, setting aside preconceived concepts of dress, voice, and attitude of the speaker. It's easy to get sidetracked and bring unrelated issues into a conversation. Directed questioning is a good method to keep a conversation on topic. Ask a specific question that moves the conversation back to the appropriate subject. An officer needs to have up-to-date information on the agency's standard operating procedures, policies, regulations, and budget. If personnel misinterpret factual points, the officer is obligated to clarify and correct information. This will help reduce the agency's grapevine. An EMS officer needs to keep his or her chief officer apprised of work performance and progress such as training, public events, and run reviews. Anytime there is a potential for conflict, the chief officer should be notified. It is important to let the chief know about anticipated problems early and to apprise them of the general morale. Every agency has an informal communication system, often referred to as the grapevine. Much of the grapevine information is based on incomplete data, partial truths, rumors, and sometimes outright lies. The EMS officer needs to deal with grapevine rumors and disseminate the correct information to personnel. Noise is anything that can clog or interfere with the delivering of the message, and in EMS there's a plethora of distractions. Background noises, conversations, horns, sirens, radios, and cell phones are just a few examples of the distractions an EMS provider must deal with. Officers should not struggle for power. Be firm about matters that are important. Keep emotions in check. Do not assume that the receiver understands the message. Provide the appropriate level of detail and watch out for conflicting details. This will help to improve communication. During an emergency incident, the EMS officer needs to communicate effectively using the direct approach. The direct approach requires asking precise questions, providing timely and accurate information, and giving clear and specific orders. In an emergency, communications is important to be direct, speak clearly, use a normal tone of voice, and hold the radio about two inches from your mouth. When using a repeater system to provide emergency communications, allow for a time delay after keying the microphone. Use plain English without using 10 codes, and use common terminology that is recognized by NIMS. Avoid being near other radios or noises such as a running engine, an AED shocking, etc. Radio messages must be accurate, brief, and clear. An EMS officer should be as consistent as possible when sending verbal messages over the radio. An overly excited person is difficult to understand and gives listeners the impression that the incident is out of control. Recordings of radio messages transmitted during emergency incidents are an effective training tool. Listening to others allows the officer to identify and emulate techniques that are clear and precise. Size up is the mental process of gathering and considering all the pertinent details of a given incident. The initial radio report follows the size up. During this report, key information is shared clearly and concisely with responding units. The communications order model is a standard method of transmitting an order to a unit or company at the incident scene. It is designed to ensure that the message is clearly stated, heard by the proper receiver, and properly understood. Medic 2 from Command. Medic 2, go ahead, Command. Medic 2, your patient will be in the red car in front of the police unit. Medic 2, copy. Red car in front of police unit. Medic 2, that is correct. Radio communications are essential for emergency operations because they provide an instantaneous connection and can link all the individuals involved in the incident to share important information. During an emergency incident, both the sender and receiver should strive to make their radio messages accurate, clear, and brief as possible. A good practice is to think first. Review in your mind what you need to say. Position the microphone, depress the key, take a breath, and then send a concise, specific message in a clear tone. 
The most common form of reporting is verbal communication from one individual to another, either face-to-face -face or via a telephone or radio. Be sure to use the terminology that is appropriate for the receiver. A CAN report is an effective means for communicating conditions, actions, and needs. Suppose an EMS officer was working on extricating a patient from a vehicle. The officer would report the approximate damage to the vehicle, the actions taken thus far, the resources needed to extricate the patient, and any additional needs that must be met to complete the task. Verbal reports, which is the most common form of reporting during an emergency incident, should be directed back to the incident commander once the task is completed, when a progress update is necessary, or when additional resources are required. Routine reports provide information that is related to personnel, programs, equipment, and facilities. Agencies may also require officers to maintain a station journal. Most EMS officers are required to provide some type of morning report to their superior officer. This may be used to identify any personnel or resource shortage as soon as possible. Monthly activity and training reports document station activities during the preceding month. Reports may include the number of responses, training activities, public education events, and station visits. An incident report is required for every emergency response. The nature and the complexity of the report depend on the situation. The Virginia Office of EMS is the depository for the patient data collection using the Virginia Pre-Hospital Information Bridge, or VFIB. Infrequent reports usually require an officer's personal attention to ensure that the report information is complete and concise. The special reports include injury reports, property damage or liability reports, vehicle accident reports, response to a grievance or complaint, a work improvement plan, and a request for other agency services. A supervisor's report is required by the State Workers' Compensation Agency whenever personnel are injured. The report serves as the control document that starts a state file relating to an injury or disability claim. The report of an injury must be submitted within 24 hours of the incident or in line with agency policy. A chronological statement of events is a detailed account of activities, such as a narrative report of the actions taken at an incident or accident, and should be included in the supervisor's report. Additional reports may be required, such as the reporting of work-related injuries to workers' compensation. Insurance coverage for a work-related injury will be dependent on a complete chronological reporting of events and circumstances contained in the report. Most reports are completed using a computer and software. The role of the officer will range from selecting pre-formatted information in an interactive online form, as with a patient care report, to composing a narrative and following a guide sheet to make a suggestion to improve operations. In summary, an EMS officer must be able to process several types of information. Successful communication occurs when people develop mutual understanding. The communication cycle includes five elements, message, sender, medium, receiver, and feedback. An EMS officer must be effective as a sender and receiver of information. An EMS officer needs to have up-to-date information. An EMS officer should keep their superior officers informed and not allow any surprises. The direct approach entails asking precise questions and giving clear and specific orders. An officer should be as consistent as possible over the radio. Radio communications are essential for emergency operations. An EMS officer needs to speak clearly and concisely in plain English. To create a report, the EMS officer must understand the specific information that is needed. The most common form of reporting is verbal communication. Written reports vary in their purpose, formality, and frequency. The EMS officer needs to understand each policy and be able to explain it to personnel, follow all policies and procedures so as to ensure they walk the talk, and ensure that subordinates follow each policy and procedure.